what you see here is um, temperature on this axis and time on this axis. And in this middle here is essentially a kind of um, a map of different boundaries of where a transformation from one phase to another begins and ends. So for example, this A right here, this A1 indicates that, uh, by the way, this is for a 1080 steel. It's a plain carbon steel, uh, very close to the eutectoid composition. So on a phase diagram, this would mean that austenite would convert almost entirely to perlite or uh, perlite's also a, a form of a, a structure that is ferrite and carbide that's what the f plus c is so what this diagram tells you is um, if you started out with austenite at let's say 800 degrees celsius uh, and you quenched it down to this temperature right here and held it, uh, it would begin the, begin the transformation from austenite to uh, perlite right about here. And it would be halfway done right about uh, here. And when I say here, what I mean is you could take this down to the timeline. So within seconds, it would start the transformation to perlite. Uh, and this is a log scale. So this is about... Um, well, I would say that's about three seconds. This is a little over one second. This is about three or four seconds. It's halfway done, and uh, probably at eight seconds, the transformation from austenite to what's labeled here, coarse perlite, is um, complete, theoretically, uh, or empirically. I guess that's how it's this diagram is created. Um, Actually, let's talk about how this diagram is created. I'm going to scroll up here and show you that how this diagram is made is uh, by uh, doing a number of experiments. And this is just a little picture of the iron carbon phase diagram. Here's temperature. Here's per weight percent carbon. So this is 100% iron here, and you're adding carbon as you go in this direction. And you might recognize this as the eutectoid uh, re reaction in that you have austenite that is 100% austenite and when you cool through this this little V part here you enter this zone which is 100% perlite so this is a kind of phase transformation that takes place upon cooling this 0.8% weight percent carbon steel and how this diagram is made is through um, a process where you take a number of these thin disks of steel, you put it in a furnace at a particular temperature that's above the austenitizing temperature, and then you quench the disk into a different temperature, a lower temperature, and then when you, you basically arrest that uh, in cold water quench, at different times and then look at the microstructure that has developed. So you, uh, and then when you do an analysis, a microstructural analysis, you can see that maybe after six minutes you have just a, a small amount of the, what you're expecting. Um, after 18, you have more, after 22, you have more. Anyway, you're, you're basically looking at the microstructure of these quenched disks to see how much time it takes to complete the transformation along this uh, isothermal line. Uh, and then you map that into this diagram down here, going from 0 to 50 to 100 percent of the transformation volume. Um, and that is mapped down at the, trend, the temperature that you're analyzing. So these these diagrams are developed by conducting that kind of experiment at these different uh, temperature ranges. And then they're labeled as to what has formed. So at this temperature range, you have formed a coarse perlite, meaning that they're uh, large grains, larger grains compared to at this lower temperature, fine perlite. And then at a much lower temperature, these other structures, upper and lower bainite, 
those, these are different crystal structures than perlite. Um, and uh, I guess you'd have to be a real materials engineering geek to um, want to understand what it is that these structures are and how they're different. Um, and then there is something that this line, this MS, is the Mart, what's called the Martin Site Start Line. M50 is Martin Site 50% transformation m90 is 90 percent transformation and it turns out that those transformations are uh they're uh time independent they're what's called a a displacive transformation meaning they they just take place at the speed of sound where the atoms just suddenly shift so if you are able to cool uh from let's say a, a austenite uh, disc all the way down to this line in under essentially a second for this composition, you could transform that into Martin site.